new system, yeah. so it takes a little longer to put on. Not a problem. Are we on? Yeah. You got to okay. turn on. We don't have the on air sign. But we are on. I can see us in the morning. That's all right. Right. Thank you. Testing. Oh, there we are. Okay. Good evening and welcome to the regular town council meeting of Monday, February 5th. Councillor Hurley, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councillor Breton? Here. Councillor Forrest? Here. Councillor Hurley? Here. Councillor Lupina will be late. Councillor Lesser? Here. Councillor Rell? Here. Councillor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor Morandello? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will start tonight's meeting with public comment. A reminder that Comments are limited to five minutes. Do we have anybody from the public who would like to speak tonight? Come on up, Mr. Mazzarella. Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. <clears throat> tonight I'd like to speak for less than five minutes about two items on tonight's agenda that this council will approve in short order. Most people in the chamber could care less what I think or what I say. Nevertheless, I feel compelled to voice my opinion as a longtime resident and taxpayer. <coughs> I am opposed to the budget reduction proposal. As it stands now, the total cost to some 3,700 students in this town consumes the vast majority of our total budget. The $58 million Board of Ed budget is only a portion of the total spent on education, adding back the debt service for our $85 million high school renovation, the cost for improvements to our football field, the cost of maintaining all, all those properties, and the list goes on and on. I haven't done the math, but I would venture to say we're in the 70 plus percent range of our total town budget. This spending cannot continue. The majority of the state reduction was for ECS funding, and this money needs to come out of the Board of Education budget. I'm also opposed to fracking waste ordinance. In my opinion, neither the town staff, committees, nor this town council have the knowledge and background to objectively decide on this proposal. The information presented at pub public meetings was presented by environmental groups that are clearly in favor of the ordinance. There was no presentation or information presented from the petroleum industry, or more importantly, an independent party. <clears throat> At previous council meetings, we heard speakers talk about the potential for tankers to crash on I-91 and spill their contents of fracking waste into the wetlands, all valid concerns. Yet the ordinance does not address the transportation at all of this material, as it cannot because of law. The ordinance will be unenforceable and is reduced, in my opinion, to a feel-good legislation. It is nothing more than honoring a campaign promise. I'm not as concerned about the outcome of these two agenda items as I am about how the process is working. In October and November of last year, we heard words from many council members like collaboration, working together as a team, transparency. I don't see any of that going on here. <clears throat> Councilor Spinella said it best in November uh, at the uh, swearing in ceremony. And uh, excuse me if I don't get it exactly right, but he said <clears throat> that only 70% of the residents, uh, or 70 percent of the residents did not vote in that election. <clears throat> and that if you consider not only the people that voted, the vast majority that didn't vote, the retired citizens, the young citizens that may not have uh, school age kill, uh, children in the school system, and if you consider all those people as a whole, 
when you make each of your decisions, most of the time you're going to get it right. And I would just ask that you think about all the people that you're representing when you decide on each and every item. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Come on up, Mr. Colantonio. Good evening. Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Here we go again. A little bit of uh, history. Showing a little bit of arrogance in an email from Bunny Terrian to Andrew Power. This was in 2008. Here we go again, Handy. Residents from Morrison Avenue at last night council meeting wanted a third stop sign. Can you send me the latest speed control count you did for the state for the street so I can show council? Thanks, Bunny. The reply from Mr. Power says, I cannot believe this issue has come up again. Stop signs should not be placed to control speed, to control speed or slow cars. I suspect that is what is behind this issue. You, me, we need to stress to council, I guess it's you, a bunch of lies, to council that putting up stop sign to Control speed is not within the guidelines and would set a bad precedent. It's amazing. This is an email from Mr. Mike Turner in 2011. He says, in February 2010, our, sur our survey crew field measured that intersection side distance from Tifton Road looking west up Morrison Avenue. The measure site distance was 340 feet. Using the Connecticut DOT guidelines, this distance is sufficient for a road inter intersection design with design speed of between 30 to 35 miles per hour. That was correct. That was before the reconstruction of the sidewalk. After the reconstruction of the sidewalk, I did use a yardstick and I got the intersectional side distance 240 feet. A few days later, the town took the side distance again and they measured 232 feet. Based on those distance, the intersectional side distance on Tipton is only good between 20 and 23 miles per hour. The posted speed is 25 and the 85th percentile goes 31 miles per hour. Why am I reading this? Because it's already been too long, but I will not go away. This is the people that work in town. They think they, they know it all. That's amazing. Now, I compare Morrison Avenue with um, Hillcrest Avenue. They have three stop signs and we have two. And by no way, I do not suggest that they remove the stop sign at Hillcrest Avenue and, and Orchard. I'm just suggesting that there is a need of a stop sign on Morrison Avenue before you get to Tifton Road because that does not meet standards. But whenever I talk about Morrison Avenue, I compare to Hillcrest Avenue because they are two similar streets except that Hillcrest Avenue meets every requirement of a street. Morrison Avenue doesn't. And yet, it's 10 years I, can, I, can, I cannot get any place. You can stop me when I'm five minutes, okay? You have time. Oh, okay. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me, let me go again, like uh, the, the difference between Morrison Avenue and, and Hillcrest. And, and again, Hillcrest has three stop signs, and we have only two. Morrison Avenue is 24 feet wide. Hillcrest Avenue is 30 feet. Safe, right? Morrison Avenue has a three-foot grass strip. Hillcrest Avenue has a 15-foot grass strip. It's kind of nice. Morrison Avenue has an average daily traffic of 730 cars per day. Hillcrest Avenue has an average daily traffic of 365 cars. 
And this is the result of they have three stop signs and we have two, that's why. And before I forget, I'm home, retired. And every day I see the Lamour trucks going down, not up, down the street, four or five times. I bet they never go by Hillcrest Avenue. You know why? They tell me. I talk to people. It's because of the stop sign. Well, I'm almost, I'm almost done, so I'll be back. Thank you for now. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Hey, come on up. I'm Diana Evans. I live at uh, 22 Beverly Road in Wethersfield. Um, I'm a uh, director of Great Meadows Conservation Trust, and I'm here to speak to the fracking waistband proposal, um, proposed ordinance um, that's on the agenda for tonight. Um, I'm here to read a statement uh, that actually comes from an analysis of the proposed ordinance that was done by Food and Water Watch, Jen Siskin, who came to speak um, last week and, and gave us so much information about fracking waste in Connecticut um, and about the model ordinance that 34 Connecticut towns have already passed. Um, so uh, we, um, the Connecticut, uh, Weathersfield Women uh, for uh, Progress, Great Meadows Conservation Trust, and Connecticut Food and Water Watch, um, object to the sunset clause. We um, very much appreciate that this um, moratorium was reported out of committee, but we do object to the sunset clause, which none of the other ordinance ha ordinances have. None of the other 34 towns uh, included a sunset clause. And I'd like to um, just read the analysis um, of Connecticut Food and Water Watch. I'll be as quick as I can. And, edited a little bit. I just received this literally 20 minutes ago. So um, I printed it out on my computer as fast as I could and, and here I am. So um, we ask that the ordinance be sent to a public hearing without the sunset clause added in. We very much appreciate um, those council members who took the time to do research and review the analysis from the Office of Legislative Research. But those individuals may not be aware that the OLR reports have a gross error and are missing certain information. Um, therefore, the reports are not really a very good basis um, for understanding the waste or making decisions on how to ban it in our town. The OLR summary incorrectly claimed in 2014 that future regulations can ban all fracking waste. If you go to the actual bill language, however, future regulations are only permitted to ban products spread on the roads. As we learned from the presentation at the library last week, um, the moratorium only bans some waste from one pro process or things derived secondarily to that process, the hydraulic fracturing process and for gas wells only. Um, all other regulations will lead to permits while the waste will be required to meet hazardous waste laws, the standards of hazardous waste laws. Another problem is that the waste exceeds hazardous waste guidelines because of the radioactivity. There is no federal agency providing regulations for this type of regulations, at radiation, and efforts by the House last year to pass a ban based on the moratorium language also removed all requirements that DEEP take this radiation into consideration when allowing it for research. Section A of the Sunset Clause um, led to questions from our members. What do the words addressing the prohibitions actually mean? Um, that verb is, um, is rather vague. So having a, also, having a Sunset Clause that makes part of our ordinance expire will not protect us in the future. What happens if, in the future, the state decides to start using fracking waste on roads? Where does that leave Weathersfield? This portion of our ordinance will now have expired and we won't be protected. Um, regarding Section B, quote, in accordance with and subject to the provisions of Public Act 14200, um, we find that that, e that, uh, that act was weak. It lacked needed definitions. It needs to be amended and improved. Um, all of the definitions and prohibitions that exist in this local ordinance should be added into the moratorium language, and the law should be changed to be a permanent ban. 
It's not certain that our legislators will do so. <clears throat> Regarding section C, this ordinance shall not be interpreted to prohibit research activities. And as mentioned before, in creating a weak ban last year, the House removed all requirements that DEP's regulations would protect public health and the environment from radioactivity. And therefore, we find um, this clause to be problematic as well. So um, we certainly appreciate the efforts of the mayor and the counselors um, to research and understand this issue. Um, we do believe that Weathersfield can show exemplary leadership, and we hope that tonight you will send it to a public hearing minus the sunset clause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, when Tom was up here earlier and mentioned the, that 70% of our people did not vote, our voters in town, he's so right. And I don't know, but that do, I don't think you're really up here with the graces of all the voters. I'd like to talk tonight about the fracking, which we had a speak. We had a number of people up here tonight already talking about that. I don't think we should be involved in this. I think that there's a lot of downside to it. I also think that um, it's none of our business. The state of Connecticut has laws, and those supersede us anyway. And for us to waste our time with something like this is wrong. I, I also believe that uh, we all have benefited from fracking. All of us. We have a cheap fuel. We all like to have our cheap fuel bills. Otherwise, our fuel bills would be much more than what they currently are. I made a comment last time here at this meeting. If you're strong enough about this issue, you should go down in your basement or wherever it is and turn the natural gas off. And that goes for the town of Weathersfield as well. After the meeting, I went outside to my car and I noticed that we have a car, or several, I don't know how many, one or two, that are natural gas. You should park them. You probably have equipment that uses natural gas. If you're really, you know, really, really hepped up on this whole thing, that's the way you do it. Turn the faucet off. Go find another source of fuel. You may have to pay more for it, but that's how liberals are. You're willing to pay more for something else in order for it to be a good source. Because obviously, natural gas, in your eyes, is not a good source of heat for energy because of what you're doing here tonight. I'd like to also talk tonight about uh, the reallocation of the monies that was cut for the state of Connecticut, from the state of Connecticut to the town of Weathersfield. <clears throat> um, I, I came up here last time, and I wasn't sure what I was reading, but obviously I was darn right in what I was reading. Board of Education got cut by $867,000, yet they only took it on the chin for $274 plus thousand dollars. I think that was so wrong. It belongs on their shoulders. They're the ones who lost it. Instead, you shifted it. You shifted the losses of money to other departments and really send a message to your employees. You send a heck of a message. And when it comes down to <clears throat> deals, you, you now owe somebody. Where before, you owed nobody. The, town, the Board of Ed should have taken the $867,000 and gone back and made their cuts. You gave them only 274, 275 to cut, which was a, a tremendous gift. 
a gift from an organization that gets so much money from this town, from the taxpayers, and we get so little back. Also tonight, you're going to be talking about or voting on town attorney. And when I look at, when I look at the rates of the town attorney, uh, I, I'm, I'm just put back. $175, $180 an hour. And when I think about these attorneys and what they're going to be doing for the town, for instance, foreclosing on people who don't pay their taxes. I mean, to do that, a monkey can do that. The forms are all out there. It doesn't take any smarts. It takes a clerk to go put the, put the name of the person, put in the right clause, and ship it out to that person and, and have a judge take care of the issue doesn't take much. This is, this is a job that's well overpaid when I look at these rates. I mean, you should cut them back. Let's face it, we are in a crisis, a financial crisis. We're not up to spending the kind of money that you folks used to spend. Mr. Young, your time we, is we, up. We if have you so would much. Take 20 seconds to finish, please. Well, I would hope that you'd put your minds to it and look for lower prices on attorney fees. Attorneys have been raking us over the coals. And for what kind of work we're getting out of them, it's, um, it's not worth anywhere near what you're paying them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Hello, Casey White, 91 Center Street. Um, I just want to say regarding the fracking ordinance that's proposed, um, I would prefer for not, not to have the sunset ordinance, but mostly I want to say thank you to the members of the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee who um, passed this to come out to a general vote. So I appreciate that, and I'm looking forward to hearing from more people uh, about, about this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? If not, we'll declare the um, public comment closed. We'll move on to council reports. Are there any council members who'd like to make a report? Okay. Deputy Mayor. The uh, Budget and Finance Committee has met since the last time. Uh, they interviewed town attorneys and a selection on that is later in the agenda. Uh, they reviewed a Gold Star uh, Parents and Spouse Tax Exemption, which is on for, uh, to be considered at the next meeting for uh, public action, and an agreement on personal property audits, which is also later on in this uh, uh, agenda. The Senior Citizens Advisory Commission met, and they're still working on their spring project. Uh, the Capital Improvement Advisory Commission has been meeting. They finished last week with their meeting with all departments and the board of ed, and this coming meeting will be uh, working on a must-do, should-do list uh, to finalize a capital improvement budget that will be forwarded to planning and zoning for a 24 referral. Thank you. Are there other council members? Councilor Spinella? The Public uh, Works Committee met and took up the fracking ordinance, and we did. Uh, recommend that this be brought to the full council on a vote of three to one with the um, sunset ordinance uh, in place as it is. Thank you. Councilor Breton? Yeah, um, on January 8th, I met with the Shade Tree Commission um, and I learned about their uh, new web page that's coming, soon to be coming. Um, as part of the town website, they're going to be putting notices of tree removal on that website, among other things. Um, and they are continuing to work on the tree ordinance. Um, also met with the library board and they accepted their strategic plan um, and we will see that strategic plan come to town council for um, for report uh, they also are working on a new website that'll be coming in March and they've started to use their new logo I think I've already seen it out there um, we just earlier this evening um, met with the, the pension committee uh, reviewed the pension uh, the plans assets uh, earn close to 16 percent on market value basis and 8.7% on an actuarial basis. And the plans, uh, the plans funded ratio is um, at uh, near 80%, which is, which is a good place to be. It's well funded. 
Um, and lastly, the public safety um, met, met um, we reviewed the need for some fire engines and uh, there we'll also be talking later on in the agenda about the retired police officers for traffic duty. Thank you. Are there other counselors? Um, yeah. Go ahead, Councilor Hurley. Um, the rec board met and they're talking about getting the, uh, the boat ramp into the cove by September. And that'll be the last big item down at the cove that has to be done. And then they're gonna start looking at signage and other things um, that can happen down there. Thank you. Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. I have two. First, a few weeks ago, the Shared Services Committee met. It's the first meeting of the new uh, counselors elected and the new board elected. And we talked about a framework for moving ahead, trying to establish uh, some goals. Specifically, we're taking the approach that it's not the board side or the town side, but it's just Weathersfield. Uh, and then specifically, we talked about the upcoming retirement of uh, Fred Bushy, head of physical services and the education uh, side. And we talked about the possibility of potentially having the town uh, take over the maintenance of the schools, but that was just a discussion item. So we made a lot of progress in our next meetings in March. And the second uh, and last report I have is uh, the Chamber of Commerce meeting this last Thursday, February 1st. We talked a lot about their upcoming events this spring, the car show, the fireworks that they're very excited about, and specifically wanted to mention their annual event, uh, awards event on May 9th. They are changing the structure this year to have it a best of, so a best of Weathersfield. So things like best pizza in Weathersfield. So there will be an opportunity for you guys to, for all the public to get their votes in uh, the best of Weathersfield. So it was a very lively chamber meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Other council reports? Okay, if not, we can move into council comments. Are there any comments? Councilor Hurley? Um, I just wanted to ask Jeff if he could give us an update on the fund zone development or at least at ne the next council meeting. Um, the Borden project continues. Uh, the owner is still working towards closure on the property. Uh, town staff and uh, the town attorney is going to meet with uh, CRDA staff later this week to uh, put together the CRDA agreement for the council to approve. Uh, the CRDA is providing $5 million to the project, so um, that process continues. Are we going to approve that agreement before the other is through? Say again? Are we approving the $5 million before the other finances are done? Well, what you're going to do is you're actually going to invite CRDA in to administer the project because they're going to hold the funds. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other council comments? And just as an aside, they'll be in agreement with the developer at CRDA also. Okay. <coughs> Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. I'll just mention that this past Friday night we had a the wine and whiskey event fundraiser to support the charities that the Weathersfield Mayor's Ball has been supporting. We had a great turnout of about 130 people, many people here on the council and the public uh, watching uh, at home attended. And just as a reminder, we're supporting three very important charities in town. They are the Senior Meals Program, the Weekend Backpack Program, and then the Early Childhood Education Scholarship Program. So thank you for everyone for their support. It was a great event. I just wanted to uh, make mention of um, some sad news that has gone on here in Weathersfield in the last couple weeks. Uh, first, I want to recognize um, Tom Mazzarella. Uh, his father, Paul, passed away uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, I had the honor of uh, campaigning with uh, Tom this past fall and uh, we spent many you know, afternoons either standing next to him at polling places or at flu clinics or sign waving and uh, he was talking to me about his father and uh, um, the, the hardships that he, he and his family were going through at the time. Um, just a little bit about uh, Tom's father, uh, a three sport captain, or a three sport, um, troop three sport um, player, uh, football, basketball and baseball, honored by the um, Hartford um, um, sports uh, association 
as well. He was a, um, a gym teacher and involved in what we, I believe should be more of nowadays is uh, after school programs for, uh, for kids up in Hartford. Um, I just wanted to recognize uh, uh, the passing of uh, Paul Mazzarella, um, uh, a resident here of uh, Weathersfield. Also, uh, recently we learned of the passing of um, Barbara Rue. Uh, her husband, uh, um, Dr. Ken Sokolowski, passed away uh, just recently, um, having uh, um, been ill for uh, a little while. Um, Dr. Ken was one of the first people I met when I came to Weathersfield. In fact, he lobbied me as I was working on my car in my driveway about the high school project. And I told him at that time I could not vote against it because I was newly married and uh, would be starting a family soon that I would hope to enjoy um, the perks of uh, a great institution like Weathersfield High School. Um, but Dr. Ken had passed away recently. Uh, he had uh, given uh, a lot to the uh, town of Weathersfield. Uh, there is a memorial set up uh, on behalf of him at uh, Corpus Christi. So if anybody wants to donate on behalf of uh, um, Ken Sokolowski, uh, the, the school will be gracious to take it. Thank you. Okay, any other council comments? Okay, um, on Monday night, there was an information uh, session on the fracking ban. Uh, members of the Conservation Commission and the Great Meadows Conservation Trust both spoke at that uh, information session and they spoke in favor of the ordinance banning fracking waste in Weathersfield. That ordinance is on the agenda for introduction. So the public hearing will be at our next council meeting. Um, I enjoyed meeting with residents and a business owner at uh, my first coffee with the mayor. The event was successful and the chairperson of the Board of Education was there. So we're going to expand the event and have it be coffee with the mayor and the chair and we'll both be at the next coffee uh, which will be at the Cove Deli on Saturday morning February 24th and just to let everyone know the next town council meeting will be on a Tuesday February 20th because town hall is, will be closed on that Monday for President's Day. Um, town manager's report. Uh, thank you. Um, there's a letter on your on the podium this evening. It's from the Department of Education as we talk about these budget cuts that you'll uh, be considering in the next few minutes. Um, one of the assumptions that most towns had was that the holdback cuts would be considered cuts as adopted in the budget uh, by the legislature. Um, the Department of Education has um, decided not to consider the holdback cuts um, adopted cuts for purposes of the MBR. So um, I don't know what legislative wisdom or in, um, um, what did I, what did I, Infinite wisdom. no, what did I want to call it? I wanted to call it. Um, August body? No, integrity, I think was the word or lack thereof of, of their, uh, of their, how they're treating local units of government at this point and what they consider cuts and what they don't consider cuts at this point. But had you taken the full 867, it would have not been allowed to be used to reduce the MBR. So the course of action tonight is probably fortuitous. We haven't run those numbers, but the Department of Ed would not let you take it as a reduction of the MBR. Okay, Intellectual you. integrity is what I was looking for. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Town Clerk, do you have any communications? I think I gave you both of the informations that we had. Um, Steve, one is that I have to report to the state on the number of voting um, voters we have and the number of machines we use because you are all responsible for it. So uh, that is at your table to, at the desk tonight for you. And the other is um, I did give you another copy of um, a, a change in the law for those people who uh, um, those uh, supported our veterans, whether they had served recently or a long time ago, and if they're uh, they have an introducing a new tool that would allow individuals who had um, for guidance for how they would like to upgrade or change their military discharge. Some of them were could have been very injured that they didn't recognize it at the time. 
um, in, in, with mostly mentally um, issues that ca were caused while they were in the service, and some of them got discharged as dishonorable because of their behavior. So they are upgrading people's, they want to, uh, they have something now in, in place that they can uh, help get them what the needs of what they need for their help. Um, and it's Thomas Quinn is working out of uh, the Congressional uh, Congressman uh, Larson's office in Hartford, and we have it on the website already, I believe, so that residents can call and if they know people who need help. A lot of these people cannot really help themselves at this point. Thank you. Okay, we'll move into council action. I believe there's a resignation from boards and commissions. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. Um, we have a resignation. Uh, I apologize for the pronunciation or mispronunciation of this name. Abilena Malaku, Democrat, 376 Knott Street. Term was February 16th, uh, 2017 to June 30th, 2020. She is resigning. And from what committee? Oh, that would be helpful. Zoning Board of Appeals. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, the next order of business is other business, the appointment of the town attorney. Do we have a motion? Yes, Mayor, I think that's me again. Uh, I move we appoint Rome McGuigan as the town attorney per section 503 of the town charter. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? Do we start off with? Or? Yes. Okay. Go right um, ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Per the town charter, the town is to limit the term of office for the town attorney to two years. And each two years, we are to solicit proposals for town attorney services. The Budget and Finance Committee has been tasked with that for many years and conducted the RFP, interviewed the three firms as identified in the packet, and is recommending to you all to continue with Roma Gwigan for another two-year term. Thank you. Deputy Mayor? Uh, I concur with the uh, manager. We interviewed the uh, three attorneys that were selected for interview. Uh, Roma Griggan did a, has done a terrific job for us in the past, uh, and I think they will continue to do that in the future, and the majority of members on our budget and finance committee have moved that forward, so uh, I look forward to an informing vote on this, and Jack continuing as I'm doing. Thank you. Is there any other comment? Councilor Hurley? Um, I was the one dissenting vote. Um, I know we're staying with Roma Guggen for consistency, but in my opinion, uh, Halloran and Sage had more experience and was better suited to serve the town. Okay. Just wanted to put that on the record. Thank you. Are there other comments? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Anybody abstaining? Dolores, do you have the vote? Six to. Seven two. Seven, two. Seven, two. Seven two. Thank you. Thank you. The next order of business is the acceptance of a deficit mitigation plan. Do I have a motion? Motion to accept the budget modifications as follows. Under the revenue accounts, decrease thirty thousand dollars from account four two one oh three supplemental motor vehicle tax. Increase thirty thousand dollars. Count 41203, building permits, decrease $9,085 from account 42501, state pilot, state-owned property, decrease $3,557 from account 42515, state pilot, colleges and hospitals, decrease $40,982 from account 42617, municipal stabilization grant, Decrease $867,674 from account 43001, educational cost sharing. Increase $40,000 to account 47401, investment income. Increase $71,591 from account 
48924, Kermer Equity Distributions. And for expenditures, decrease $135,000 from account 620, Social and Youth Services. Decrease $20,000 from account 700, Public Libraries. Decrease $20,000 from account 800 for Park and Rec. Decrease $207,151 from account 920 for debt services. Decrease $89,000 from account 950. Transfers to CNEF CIP. Decrease $64,000 from account 960. Compensated absences slash administrative salary pool. Thank you. Do I have a second? A second. Okay. <coughs> Manager? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. These are the uh, adjustments, and we're going to call them adjustments, not amendments to the budget that staff is recommending to account for the roughly $922,000 reduction the governor chose to impose on us after we readopted our budget in October or November of last year. Um, these are di uh, various accounts uh, which impact some programs for a short period of time. The expectation is that these would have to be restored next year, but for this year, these adjustments are made with limited to no impact on the overall program. Thank you, Jeff. I'd like to thank you and Mike O'Neill for your hard work in finding these savings that will have a minimal impact on our residents and on services that we provide to the town. Um, do we have council comments? Councilor right. Hurley? Um, I don't think it's gonna be a minimal impact. It'll probably be a bigger impact next year um, when all these things have to be put on. Um, I'm hoping that when it does put us in a bad position that we don't start deferring employee benefits and other things like the state did and put us in a position like that. Thank you. Other comments? Deputy Mayor? Uh, just to echo some of what Jeff said, uh, most of the changes in here are as a result of uh, you know, increases in our building permits that came through, uh, investment income increases, uh, Kermity equity distributions, uh, the money that we uh, show as a negative decrease in social and youth services is mostly as a result of the uh, fact that the renters uh, rebate that we thought we were gonna have to pay 100% of because the state was cutting us on that re rebate. Uh, we ended up getting the portion of that back so that's a help that doesn't go against the department. Uh, the debt service amount was $207,000 was the rebate we got from CNG and um, CLMP for the uh, high school projects becoming more energy efficient and the money had to be used towards that project. So reducing the debt is a good thing towards that which helped bring us into balance. Uh, the transfers for CIP, CNEP were for reserve accounts that were in there such as the window account which means just delaying adding some money to that for future use. And uh, I would like to commend the administrative staff on uh, their uh, agreeing to a 0% increase for this year. Uh, and uh, by doing all of this, we save any possibility of layoffs on the town side or the board side. And hopefully, you know, next year, the board will consider this when they put their budget together as we will on our side too, because we don't know what's coming forward from the state for next year. Thank you. Other comments? Councilor Rell? I have to concur with what uh, Deputy Mayor Martino said. We don't know what's coming next year. And I don't know if Jeff would be able to answer this. I know it came out pretty quick today. The governor announced mm -hmm. what um, rescissions he's going to be looking at on Wednesday when he delivers his final uh, budget address. Uh, do we know any impact to Weathersfield right now? We, he put out what the 19 numbers would be. Overall, Weathersfield drops another $62,000 from the rescission amount. We have yet to hear of how they're going to solve the current year problem. 
are any of these um, expenditure reductions what you would call you know one time only or one offs that we would not see next year if uh, uh, reductions are worse than sixty two thousand all of them are one time events so like I said we're going to have to replace these dollars. This was just an attempt to manage a budget what I'd call a crisis and that's what you do in a crisis you take what you can and figure out how you're going to manage it down the road would we be able to rely on the renters rebate next year that reduction uh, we've not seen how they're going to handle that as you know there were two programs that the state used to fund a hundred percent of the elderly circuit breaker and the renters rebate um, those two programs have now been thrust upon us to maintain that total dollar amount is over three hundred fifty thousand dollars which we had never budgeted before we were lucky in the fact that we only have to pay fifty percent of the renters rebate I don't know if that's going to continue next year in terms of only fifty percent it was fortuitous that in the by in the bipartisan budget that they somehow put aside some money for it I don't know if that's going to continue or be recommended in the governor's budget. Okay. So we may end up having to pick up the full $270,000 a year of that program. Next year. Next year. Including FY19, $62,000 hit. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the state aid numbers we get as part of the budget don't include these programs. This is... These, those two were fine print in the bipartisan budget. budget. Okay. Um, yeah, I hate to say it, it's not going to get any better. Um, budget mess both here in town, having to, you know, keep coming back and, you know, praying that we don't have decisions from the state. I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon. Um, forecast. $244 million deficit this year, FY18, needs to get corrected. And then a three, three and a half to $4 billion deficit in FY20, 21. Um, it's going to be placed on the, the shoulders of taxpayers. Uh, be it you pay out of one pocket to the state or you pay out of the other pocket to the towns. Um, we're going to get hit. I think we need to do a, sharpen our pencils and take a better uh, look at where we can save here in town. Um, otherwise, I hate to say it, you're just going to start to see tax increases and tax increases and tax increases. We're looking at tolls as a, uh, a fix. We're looking at legalization of marijuana, casinos. Those are all revenue uh, uh, fixes. There's nothing about spending, you know, controlling spending in, in, in the revenue um, or the money that goes out. Um, I think we need to take a, a, a better look at our finances and uh, the impact that it would have on taxpayers uh, here in town. Um, just uh, going forward, uh, I think we got to do a better job. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other comments? Seeing none, we'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Okay. Anybody abstaining? Dolores, do you have that vote? Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> the next order of business is use of retired police officers for traffic duty. Do I have a motion? Yes. Um, motion to approve the special duty police officer program. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Yeah. Thank you. Second. Second. Where's our retail manager? <laughs> uh, thank you, <laughs> Madam Mayor and Council. I'll have Stephanie Askin come up in the chiefs here to answer questions about this, but we're looking to reutilize uh, fully certified police officers to handle some of our traffic duty jobs. That relieves uh, some of the pressure and, and some of the ordering conditions of our officers. Uh, so I'll have Stephanie go over this. Good evening, so. Stephanie. Thank you for being here. Good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your time tonight. As Jeff indicated, we are looking to um, employ some of our retired police officers who maintain their certification as a police officer to work what we call um, special duty jobs uh, which have to do with traffic and utility work zone areas 
Um, this would allow officers not to be ordered in, uh, and it would increase the pool of individuals that we could use for these types of positions. It is on an as-needed basis. Uh, it's considered part-time. They would, uh, they're considered non-union individuals. So again, it's you know part-time, just as we have other part-time employees. They would be paid an hourly wage, which would be the top step of uh, the police officer at time and a half. They would be, uh, there are certain minimum uh, hours that they would be paid for if they're called in uh, and the job is canceled and such. Are there any specific questions I can answer for you? Um, yes, let me begin. So is there any cost to the town for having, for starting this program? No, actually I believe it'll save some cost to the town because the way the, that it works now so when there's a special private duty job, they put it out for the police officers. If no one takes advantage of it, um, then they'll contact other towns to find out if they can f get someone to fill that position. If they cannot, then they have to order someone in. Now, when they order in, it's in reverse seniority order. So the person with least seniority is often called in. Uh, so they're unable to take vacation some time or impacts the, the life work balance for them. So I think we'll actually see some, Im some improvement as far as uh, individuals lower on the seniority list getting to take some time off rather than always being the ones that are ordered in. Just one additional comment to that. Mm -hmm. The payments for the special duty officers are not in the general fund. So that money that we get from the contractors goes into a special duty fund. Payments go to the um, officers who conduct the duty out of that fund, so this is not a budgeted fund. Now we do, because part of the fee we charge to the contractors includes administrative expenses that covers the cost of the police car, insurance, pension costs, and some of our soft costs, uh, there's a piece of that special duty fund that is transferred as part of the annual budget back to the general fund to cover our costs. So this really does not impact the town budget other than through um, a recouping of our soft cost. Thank you. Are there other questions? Councilor Latina? Hi, Stephanie. Um, yeah. Did we have conversations, the union's okay with this, they're not, we're not breaching any contract with current employees? No, actually the union came forth to us in regard to this uh, and, and they're very much in agreement on this. Okay, thank you. Councilor Forrest? Councilor Lee, um, is a police officer who's serving as a private duty, they, they probably are not necessary. this is for Wakefield cops, but generally, could they also be Wakefield police, but they could be you know, other town police, but they're doing a shift over here or something like that? So That's correct. The way, it, the way the program works right now is when there is a special duty, private duty job, it's posted for all police officers within the town. If no one accepts it, the town will seek from other towns, some an officer to fill that position. And is there, a, is there an alternative to having a, and I'm guessing this is for traffic flow during construction times on roads and stuff like that. Is there, is there an alternative to using a police officer? Are we required at law to use a pol police officer? I'm gonna defer to the chief on that. And, and we may be, I'm just gonna ask. Yeah, thanks guys. answer your question uh, there are certain streets in Wethersfield that you have to have a police officer on and there are certain streets that you don't so it's designated by the geography not by whether we have one available or not is that sort of based on the busyness of the street kind yes of concept? yes and is that officer when they're doing those jobs are they also authorized to help continue to help with uh, like patrolling and, and that kind of thing. So if there was somebody that was driving by, you know, using their cell phone, can they stop them or whatever, or whatever it is? Yeah, um, they're still police officers. They can still right. enforce the law. There's, but doing that type of a job, they would probably call for a patrol officer to come over and take care of that because they're busy doing what they're doing. They should not be walking away or going away from the job site because that's where they're there. They're there for the safety of the public and the, the workers. Okay. Thank you. Okay, 
other questions? Councilor Rell? Not so much a question, but more of a comment. And, you know, Chief, if I'm wrong, please let me know. Um, it always bothers me when I'm driving by these construction sites and I see an on duty police officer and the cars are running. And I know the batteries need to be charged and up, you know, keep the uh, lights going and all that while they're there. In a time of, you know, desperation almost as where we are right now, actually, you know, Jeff had mentioned that, you know, these are really troubling times. Is there a way we can reduce the idling of some of the cruisers at the uh, construction sites? Yes. Back when gas, gasoline was very expensive, we had bought this equipment that we put on the cars that would, because the lights are going, so uh, that would drain the battery in next to no time. So there was a, a special kind of unit that went onto the engine that would start the engine when the battery started to get down, run it until the battery came back up, and then shut off again. But those units are very expensive, and when the gas prices went down, it was cheaper to leave them running than it was to buy that equipment to put on the cars. Okay. That may be something we, as we start to get into, and you heard my comments about mm -hmm. the uh, future budget deficits. I mean, I can say that every time. Maybe going forward as things start to get a little bit hairier here in town where cuts are coming through, maybe we'll look at that. I know it's cost prohibitive, but maybe if we pool with other towns purchasing them, if any other towns want to do it. No, it's, it's, it's not one, something that you can move from one car to another. When it gets installed, it stays in that car. And, uh, and they don't, we had a problem with them lasting for very long. And I guess, like I said, they were very expensive. Actually, it was Jimmy McDonald that had gotten those units. And that's how long ago it was. Okay. Maybe if technology got a little bit better, yeah. prices right. got cheaper. There might be something to look at. Something to look at, exactly. Yes, okay. absolutely. And, and I would be glad to look at it. I used to have a problem with that myself, but then it got to be a, a safety issue. Mm -hmm. If you just have the car there sitting in without the lights, yes, it blocks, but it, it doesn't cause the attention that the lights do. And right. So oh, it's yeah. six no, and safety is paramount, but you know, as you're starting to see these idling cars, it's as the guy who goes around the house following my kids turning off lights in bathrooms, bedrooms, and kitchens, anything we can do to save a couple bucks. I appreciate right. it. Thanks, Chief. Any other questions for the chief or for Stephanie? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the motion passes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. The next is the agreement for personal property audits, and we have the town assessor here. Do we have a motion? Uh, move. I move to approve the use of Tax Management Associates, Inc. for business personal property audit services. Second. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, the Budget and Finance um, Committee reviewed the request of Town Assessor Foner Eller, who's here this evening to answer any questions about using Tax Management uh, Company to review the business, business personal property audits. We currently audit five to 10 accounts per year. Um, and uh, this would allow for an audit of the accounts over three years, uh, um, every account over $50,000. Um, this kind of works in hand in hand with the re reval that's going on. Um, if there's questions for Fauna, she'll be sure to answer it. How many accounts do we have over $50,000? Any for Fauna? Good evening. Good evening. We currently have 210. I mean, these are not exact numbers, but. So the audit will be about 70 a year? Yeah, about by the three, yeah. I, I would assume they'd take portions from certain price ranges, so it's not all heavily one-sided. It would be a portion to different pricing categories. Thank you. Other questions? Council Latina. 
Fauna, what's the process for just identifying the businesses? Like, will they get a letter that, hey, this company is coming to talk to you? Yes, they, they will get a letter. Um, TMA, well, I'll approve the letter before TMA sends it out. They'll send it out. They will be fully responsible for dealing with the taxpayer, um, going through the whole audit process, and then they'll turn over their findings to us here, and then we will also review them before they're added. And what kinds of things might they be looking for at a company? Uh, undeclared personal property. So it would be personal property. Every, every year, every business is supposed to declare the personal property they have here in Weathersfield. Um, the audit is looking for stuff that they have not declared. Machinery and? Any business personal property, anything that's used to run a business in the town. Thank you. Other questions? Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. Fauna, can you comment on maybe what the potential savings is to the town or? Uh, our, our gain in yeah, revenue. Yeah. Um, TMA did some estimations, although this is off, off of uh, 2015. I believe it was around 750,000, be about 225,000 a year, because they're gonna be rotated in thirds. So you wouldn't get 750,000 every year. It's just that that would be the total Over three gain. Years. Yep. And this is consistent with what a lot of towns do, right? Uh, yeah, Rocky Hill has done it. Um, the Norwich has done it. Um, I believe there's a list in your packet. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, anybody else? Okay, seeing none. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Next is bids. Do I have a motion? Thank you, Fauna. Do I have a motion for the bids for the Weathersfield High School renovation project technology lease? Yes, Mayor. I move to authorize the town manager to enter in a three-year lease agreement with TD Equipment Finance, Inc. for the financing the purchase of 600 Dell CB11 laptops for a total of $122,944. Thank you. Second? Second. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, this is the actual lease agreement and paperwork for the Chromebooks that were authorized for purchase by the Council some eight weeks ago or around thereabouts. Uh, so we did reach out and bid and Mike's here to, tonight to talk about the, the banking process and uh, those type of things. Very good. Thank you. Are there any questions? No questions? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any nays? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. I'm Thank opposed. you. I'm opposed. Oh, one opposed. Okay. Thank you. Um, next item of business. We have two ordinances for introduction, and then we have the meeting minutes of January 16th. Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Are there any um, corrections? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Um, we have public comment. It's limited to five minutes. Do we have anybody who'd like to speak? Mr. Colantonio, come on up. Good evening again. Gas Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. We live in a crooked society. Now, I did not really understand everything, but uh, I guess right now there are officers that uh, trying to to direct traffic during construction. We're gonna be hiring retired officers at a step up pay, which I don't know what it means, and at one and a half times the salary. It seems to me that basically overtime pay was after 40 hours, not 
if they call you. But I do not understand that anyway. It seems uh, the town doesn't pay. Well, the contractor pays. The money has to come from someplace. But I do not understand. But let me go back to the stop sign. Uh, and I was comparing Hillcrest Avenue with uh, Morrison Avenue. The distance between the front of the houses is less than 100 feet for Morrison Avenue and 150 feet for Hillcrest, which means that the frontage of the house from the right-of-way line on Morrison Avenue, it's only 25 feet. On Hillcrest Avenue, it's 50. And it makes a difference when cars go by. It's very noisy. But of course, the town doesn't care about that. Orchard Street and Tifton Road connect to Morrison Avenue. Orchard Street and Tifton Road connect to Morrison Avenue. That means two T intersections on Morrison Avenue. O Orchard Street connects to Hillcrest Avenue only. One intersection. One intersection, they have three stop signs. We have two intersections with three stop signs. Why? I think we're getting cheated. Now, one more thing. The town has taken measurements for intersection side distance for Orchard at Hillcrest and found to be 344 feet to the east and 970 feet to the west, which you do not need the stop signs. But they were put in a long time ago, so I guess you don't have any rights to remove them. Huh? The town has taken also measurements for the intersection side distance for Orchard Street and Morrison Avenue and found to be 290 feet. And as you remember, 290 feet, the police department says that you need a stop sign. After that, they did take uh, also the distance from Tifton on Morrison Avenue, and they found it 232 feet. Now, if they say that you need a stop sign for 290 feet, don't you think that 232 feet, it's also needed a stop sign? No. I worked in engineering for 37 years, 37 years, and the accountability of the people in this town is atrocious. Now, uh, let, me, let me just uh, go back what I've asked before for a statement from the town engineer saying that basically the intersection side distance of Tifton and Morrison Avenue, it's, it's okay. I haven't really got an answer yet. I also asked last time, says, can I get basically proof that basically the, the police department has checked the intersection side distance after the construction of the sidewalk. I haven't got that yet. I was promised last year sometimes that there was going to be improvement at the intersection of the driveway and Morrison Avenue where there was just an accident not too long ago. I haven't heard anything about that yet. And also, the last thing that I also questioned it and asked, which I didn't get an answer yet, is, uh, is uh, basically bushes and orchard that just in front of the sidewalk. Is that kosher? I mean, if I'm walking on the sidewalk when there is snow, I mean, you know, I can even walk on the sidewalk because there are bushes there. Where are we going? And yet, every once in a while, the town manager says that I got all the answers that, to the question that I asked. Well, I don't think so because, hey, I know I'm turning, you know, well, I'm over 70 years old, so. Forget it. I forget a lot of things. So maybe a little bit of reminder every once in a while will go a long way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Mazzarella? <coughs> Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rell, for the kind words. Appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to... I don't know, give a little education to the public, to the counselors that may not be uh, up to speed on how personal property tax impacts businesses in town. I just recently, uh, well, I'm in the process of closing my own business, been in operation 30 years. 
When a business buys a piece of equipment, it can be something as insignificant as a desk or a chair or a computer or a phone or a truck, a uh, fork truck, uh, racks, anything. Uh, those items are, are deemed as an asset and they go on a depreciation schedule. And each year, that depreciation schedule is submitted to your town and they ass assess tax on the use of that personal property. And it's based on the mill rate. Now those items that you purchase deteriorate over time and you're allowed to depreciate the amount for all those uh, items. Some have different schedule depending on if it's electronic equipment, computers, things that expire more rapidly than your furniture. But it never goes to zero. It goes to 30% and stays that way. So the desk that I bought 30 years ago, every year I pay taxes on 30% of the value of that piece of furniture. And the average public, I don't believe, realizes that. And uh, this is why it's important to keep the mill rate down to attract businesses because that's a, that's a cost that nobody really sees. And uh, it's a significant cost. In my business, I pay more for personal property tax than I do for real estate tax on the building I own. Uh, so it's significant. And you can imagine if it's a company the size of Pratt & Whitney or something like that. You know, you're just talking a huge amount of money. And for the little guy that has just a little shop in town here, he's got to come up with that money every year. And he doesn't get any more out of that desk than he did the day he bought it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mazzarella. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Young? Good evening again, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. That was an interesting discussion by Tom regarding how taxes work. Boy, I can see why companies leave the state of Connecticut. Earlier tonight, Mr. Rell had spoken about Connecticut's physical crisis deepens and the, and the Connecticut taxpayers will pay the price. He's so right. He's so right because your decisions and the decisions from the people up at the state capitol are the ones that drive us out of the state of Connecticut. Yet, when we think about what Mr. Rell had said, we could go right down this list that I have and we could talk about Chromebooks tonight was voted on. He knows we're broke, but he still voted for it. In the past, he's voted for a number of other things, yet he could make a sorry, put out a sorry words about how hard this is going to be on the Connecticut taxpayer or the Weathersfield taxpayer, and he himself will go ahead and continue to vote for more borrowing. Let's look at the borrowing for a moment. Well, you know, Renovation of the Weathersfield High School. Enormous amount of borrowing that we're now being, looking down the eye of to pay. I say that's totally poor planning, reckless decision making on the part of our town leaders. We also have recently, including Mr. Rell, he voted for resurfacing, bankrupt field, without any contributions coming from the sports gate receipts. After 14 years of running with turf on that field, they had nothing to put up to pay for the new turf. It all had to go, go borrow it. And Mr. Rao voted for it. I, I'm sorry. Just you did vote for it. I did vote for it. That's right. There's and you can get up here. I have the floor, Mr. Rell. And when you talk about how the taxpayers are going to pay like you're sorry for them, baloney. 
you voted all along for these big taxes coming up because you, you have not, not figured out what's going. I have the floor. You haven't figured out what the consequences are of all this borrowing. And now here we are. We're in a big problem. We've known this was coming for a number of years. Yet you folks didn't care. You just kept borrowing. You borrowed money for equipment to keep the town running. Again, you buy fancy fire engines, you buy great big equipment, you buy cars. You buy even cars that use natural gas. And it's fracked natural gas that you're using. And not only is the gas that's going in the other cars, that they use fracking for that too. You should turn the spigot off, Mr. Manager. You know, you're a hypocrite to, to support. No, I don't have the floor. I have the floor. You can talk later. That's below the chamber. Mi you want to talk, uh, talk, so don't mi call people mi names. Mr. Young, you do have a, a responsibility to be civil to the council members. Civil. Well, he name calling is not civil, Mr. Young. I had the floor. I don't care what you have. You don't call people names. It's beneath the chamber. We had super deals that we've given over the years. And when I think about the Standish House, we could have used that 40 some thousand dollars in our revenue bucket. Instead, we gave it away for $100 a year. Kinney Center, same idea. We could have rented or sold that building and had money in our pocket. Instead, we rented it out for $100 a year and there's, whoever has it is making all the money that we should have had. This idea tonight about the police cars sitting idling. I mean, I, I didn't know all of that was going on with the exception as I do see them sitting there idling, but I didn't know that they had some me mechanism in there that starts them up and shuts them down. But I, I also got that on my car too. So technology does work. But the fact is we have spent, or you folks have spent, a tremendous amount of money without any consideration to what the future was going to be here in the, in the town of Wethersfield or the state of Connecticut, even though it's been on the wall for years. Thank you, We've Mr. Seen Young. This. Your five minutes is up. And then we have tolls. Tolls that are going to be up and down the, our general highways, Route 2, 84, 91, we're going to look at seven, seven cents more per gallon for gasoline. Of course, the town doesn't have to pay that tax. And seven dollars extra if you buy a new tire under the current regime's okay, Your time thought. is up. Thank, Thank you Thank you very comments. much, madam. Nice to come down and see you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Okay, seeing none, I will ask for a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. There'll be a workshop, budget workshop meeting after that, which is open. Oh, Thank you. Um, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody Aye. opposed? Anybody abstaining? Motion passes. Thank you.